Right, this is Sheila, 2010. It's the last day of January, actually. Um, I'm now going to continue with my um, re-recordings of the original cassettes that were done between 2005 and 2008. This particular one will be my visit to Sudbury, particularly St Gregory's of Sudbury, the church and graveyard, where I found Hassels and Masons, and also saw the skeleton, the skull I should say, in the chancery of an old, old, old Archbishop of Canterbury who had been uh, executed. Anyway, here we go then. We're back to 2006 in Suffolk and I'm off in my camper van doing family tree research. unbeknown to me it hadn't happened yet but not long after this period when I was up there doing all this recording and going around graveyards and places on my own there was a serial killer in Suffolk not far from where I was rambling about all the time but of course he was looking for ladies of the street from Ipswich and he, he murdered them and took them out and dumped their bodies in the woods and that so I think if that had happened when I was up there I would have been a bit more scared Oh no, that's just a bit of um, news to add to the tape recording. Carlton, I think there's a place called Carlton. Oh, I'm still in uh, Sudbury and I've come to Parish Church of St Gregory, Sudbury, which I hadn't spotted on the way in. There's also um, a memorial to the people that died in the First World War. Um, Let's just see if there's any names on there that might uh, belong to us. Or, you know, let's have a look. Um, I've not seen anything on there, it's not Smith. There's any books. 
Anyway, and it's um, it's squarish tower. I'm just going to go and have a look inside. Well, it was a really interesting visit when I went inside the church. Um, there were two ladies in there doing cleaning and obviously care a lot about the church. He spoke to me at quite a lot of length about various things and they also showed me the head of, a, of an Archbishop of Canterbury who also had a lot of involvement here, who had been beheaded by um, a rebel revolt at some point in the past, 13th century, sometimes like that. And they keep the head in the vestry in a little cupboard under lock and key. Um, so that was, I didn't expect to see that, they just asked me if I wanted to see the head. So that was, um, I did take a photo, I don't know if it'll come out, but he was actually beheaded and they were allowed to bring his head back. It sounds a bit morbid, but, uh, and I've just come across, um, a Eileen Newman Mason, beloved wife of Joseph Mason, um, who died, um, December the 2nd, 1857, age 35. It's a, quite a big upright thing. Well, not upright, it's a, it's like, um, shape of a roof, really. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to see who's on the back, but that's, I've just come across a mason anyway. Um, still trying to, and there's Joseph Mason on the other side. So they're both in here. Um, it's not quite so clear, but I thought he probably died not long, um, before or after his wife. Um, so that's quite interesting. So I didn't plan to come here, it was totally spontaneous. I didn't really know what I was going to do today. It was one of those days, beautiful summer's day, I just needed to get out and about. So that's what I've done. And there's uh, William Hill, and Ursula Hill, and Thomas, their son, they're buried here. Not a lot of graves, but there's a few. Like I said, I've just come across a, a mason, I might come across more in a minute. Don't know if they're related, of course. Could be, though. Take a picture of it, just in case. Just a reminder, this is the first church of St. Gregory, Sudbury. Um, the St. Peter's one's not open very often, usually on a Thursday. There's a footstone SO, died 1770. And another one, NO, JO, and JO. Can't see the names at the moment. Could be Oak, you never know. It could be another name. Maybe. 
these things up. So, you know, you never know when, when you're out and about what you're going to find when you do spontaneous visits. I've come across this uh, piece of architecture with raw iron gates and castle-like battlements and uh, like a coat of arms. And it says, Sudbury Freeman's Trust, gate of the college founded by Bishop Simon of Sudbury, 1374. That is, of course, a bishop that lost his head. Um, and it's kept inside the church. I'm going to try and take a picture of this, but it's a bit dark. All right, it's all past three. I had to drive back from Long Melford right there to uh, Sudbury in order to get some petrol. There was not one single petrol station, but there's a big church uh, at Long Melford, and it's a big, long village full of uh, history. It's a place that you need to come to for the a day, probably, to explore properly. Um, I'm going to head for that big church now, uh, at Long Melford. So I'm still, I'm doing like a little tiny tour today. I'm in a, a big queue because there's a, a steam rally at Long Melford starting on um, Saturday. And we're actually behind a steam roller, which I avoided earlier. But I'm now stuck behind it because I had to come back and find petrol. Over and out. What's going on in England? Well, the World Cup's underway. England play Portugal on Saturday. Tennis is on. Agassi is actually playing at the moment on this Thursday afternoon. I'm still stuck behind a steamroller with smoke pouring out the top of it. Um, and that's about all for now. Agassi has got through on the tennis and another round. An old player, tennis player from America. He's getting lots of cheers from the crowd. Right, this is 
Yeah, Holy Trinity Church, Long Melford, I've arrived at now. Long chat with uh, the lady who's like a warden there and runs a little gift shop. Bought some postcards. Um, I don't know if we've got any relatives here, but it's quite likely we have. This is a massive graveyard. It's very overgrown. It's a time to come in the winter to try and look around this one. It's huge. A huge church. Apparently this churchyard is a wildlife sanctuary to preserve um, countryside wildflowers and meadows with plants that are more rare. So it's only um, cut at certain times of the year. Um, so it's to conserve wildlife under the Suffolk Wildlife Trust. That's why it's so overgrown. But we've got apparently uh, the lady inside said there is a database of the graves that someone's compiled. So I'll need to try and get hold of that. Because otherwise it's going to be very, very difficult to find anyone. There's like a well, we don't know even know if I've got anyone here actually. Um, I mean, it's, the grass is three to four foot in height, and not, if not higher. So, I've got no idea if we've got any relatives, but there are little tiny pathways cut in and out, so I can have a little scan, like I do sometimes, to see if any names crop up. Um, which is quite interesting. One, what? I'm just going to take a picture. That was the last film, and I forgot to buy a film when I was um, in in the garage. I knew there was something I had to get. I said, there's little pathways, indentations cut in every now and again, but not everywhere. Um, like I said, the grass is sometimes five, six foot in height in certain areas around here. Um, I'm having a quick look around, see if I can see anything. Let's go up this way a minute. There's lots of little wind. It's huge, this graveyard. It's uh, nearly as big as that one in um, Soham. I know, it's a lot of work, a lot of iron crosses everywhere. And they're surrounded by fields and um, meadows all around here. It's just quite pretty. As I try to go for a wee somewhere where I can't be seen. Because you never know when a grave is going to surface when you least expect it. Um, like the hassle and the Mason I found at Sudbury today. I'm not saying that they're related to us, but it's always a good idea to take the names down because it might. I know we got somebody that came to Sudbury, but I can't remember if it was an oak, a hassle, or a, a Brooks. So there's no point in actually talking about any particular grave here, there's so many, a lot of metal ones. I'll do this one. Frederick Bogus. Or, yeah, Bogus. Died in 1914. Age 86. And his wife, Jane. That's a metal cross. There's a lot of those here. Some Celtic looking. And they've still got their inscription. They haven't rusted too much. But of course, you know, when we know, when we can get hold of the uh, <coughs> database, it'd be handy. <coughs> I'm just having a scan at the moment of... Uh, 
I can see Isabel Smith sticking out over there. He died July the 12th, 1906, And Thomas Smith, who died 1908, age 82. And their daughter, Eliza Smith. So we have got Smiths, but uh, there's so many Smiths. It is quite a long village, and it's, I suppose it's bigger than we think. But there's an awful lot of graves there. I should think they come from the villages around as well, yeah. And then there's a, beyond the old graves, there's a, a whole field of new ones, which are obviously more kept than these old ones. Which, like you say, have become a natural wildlife sanctuary. <coughs> That's a big manor house here as well, which uh, will have to come another day to go round with lots of grounds. Um, there's a lot of history in this county, a lot of history. There's something called the Lady Chapel. Couldn't get in there a minute ago. Ah. I've got in here now. I thought it was locked. It's not like an extension to the main church. Looks like it's had its walls done up. The Lady Chapel. and the altar were woven locally and hung in Westminster Abbey for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. <coughs> I think they're going to be replaced soon. Looks like it's been done up. I don't know if this floor is original or have gone now, yes. They've been, re they're going to be restored, I think. And the ceiling's pretty old. Very old, oaky looking wood. with figurines carved in, <coughs> in the archways. But the rest of it has been given a coat of paint and the floor, it looks pretty it's all like big bricks, I don't know if that's uh, been reset, I should imagine. Looks pretty sparse as well. Don't know what it's f for. This old part of the church. Dedicated to somebody, I should imagine. They hold rallies and fates and things. And there was a... I'm standing outside the door leading to a hospital that was founded by Sir William Cordell Knight in the year 1573, with the wall being rebuilt in 1981, lead with the, the doorway into what's now sort of what... and what was Alms Houses. Yeah. Very English village. Right, I'm at a place called Kirtland on the outskirts. I've come to a place called Our Lady and St. Philip. Right, I should carry on with that side. I finished the um, Sudbury one and, the, and um, the Long Melford one. So I'll go back to doing um, Kirtling and Carlton on another recording just to make it easier for everybody to find things as opposed to like plowing through 
Um, so there is a, a lot of history about Long Melford and um, St Gregory and it's more than likely that we have got ancestors in both places because just up the road from here is a village called Clare and I have got ancestors, great grandparents going back a long way who were the de Clares who came over w with the conqueror and um, were knights and barons and very powerful people in society and we are connected to them. There's still a castle there. I never knew about them when in, at this period in time in 2006. It's now 2010 and I do know a lot more about them. And um, various bits of information I put in, um, on, on the internet via Ancestry.com or little stories I do all reveal what we've discovered about these ancestors. Anyway, that's all for now. This is Sheila, 2010.